the WhatsApp group for us on the, on the chat for those guys that are not yet on our WhatsApp group. Um, you can you can join the chat um, in the chat. There's a link to the WhatsApp group, or you can send me send me a WhatsApp on on my cell number. And why is that not drawing? And I will add you to to our WhatsApp group. And then also let me quickly put in just the registration form, um, the link to that as well, or the attendance register, sorry, not registration form, attendance register that um, you need as users later on for the session. Okay. Um, so I will put the recording later tonight on, on our WhatsApp group. For those people that are joining for the first time on on one of these sessions or on the WhatsApp group, I will repost um, all the previous presentations and and sessions as well. Then the other thing is if you want to get access to all those recordings and get access to this session without logging in as a guest or unverified um, you can send a, an email to ctntat at unisa.ac.za they will give you give you access to the western cape portal um, so that you guys can also see what other sessions and classes are running okay and then i will also update our um, plan guide for the session plans because tonight we are doing nearly what I wanted to do in in more than one session so we will um, tonight's session cover everything in chapter three so so I will update this but next week we will start looking at at chapter chapter four, so that we can get a bit more in in line with what your assignment due dates are. Um, so this week we'll cover, um, we'll combine those two. We'll do chapter three. We'll finish with that, and then next next week on the twenty seven, we will start with chapter four. So I will update this on the scheduler as well um, so that and I'll share it into into the chat and on my um, on the WhatsApp group so that we can just um, be on on par then with what we're doing and then next week we will do um, both measurements so again we'll combine nearly the 3rd and the 10th of April sessions. We will look at the whole chapter of chapter four. Um, so we. So we will then. Look at um, all the things around measurement for for next um, in next week's session. Um, so to, tonight chapter three next week, chapter four, um, so that we are then hopefully on par with what your assignments are that you need to cover. OK, so in in tonight's session, um, we're looking at operations, so we're going to look at factors, we're going to look at fractions, we're going to look at decimal percentages and ratios. Um, so basically everything in in chapter chapter three. What we will also look at is um, we will look at how to list all the factors. Um, we will look at determining the, the lowest common um, multiple. 
Um, I'll show you some some ways to do that. Um, then we will also do some basic operations with fractions and decimals. And then we will look at how to change some of those um, into percentages and ratios as well. OK, so so that will be the things that we will 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 look at tonight. So the first thing is around finding factors. Um, and yeah, I'm going to show you a principle that that I normally use, um, and that is um, this one. So I'll go through it. I'll show you one with a different different number as well. Then we can look at at how we will can write it down as well. But so the first one was if we needed to to find the common factors for for 36. Okay, so how I would start off is a bit different to this. So this is one way you can say what times what will give you 36? So you can say 1 times 36 will give you 36. 2 times 18 will give you 36. 3 times 12 will give you 36. 4 times 9 will get you 36. 6 times 6 will get you 36. So you nearly went all the way down with that. And you could have continued to say, well, 9 times 4, 12 times 3, 18 times 2, and 36 times 1. Okay, so but at that point, what they then basically did with this is to say, we're actually just going up. I see now this has changed. I just want to get back to the full view. Um, so at this point, they just now moved up with it to say, well, we can look at it from the other side now, 9 times 4, 12 times 3, 18 times 2, 36 times 1. OK, so you can nearly decide to, I would normally put everything down in one list um, and not at this point go the other way around because sometimes one might forget something. Um, so this is how I would have done it is to say 136, 2, 18, 3, 12, 4, 9, 6, 6, 9, 4, 12, 3, 18, 2, 36, 1. Because when I then need to write down the factors, it would be 1, Two, three, four, six, nine, twelve, eighteen, and thirty-six. So that we might sometimes write six down twice, or you might then forget one of the others. So that is, I would go straight down. Here was another example. But done exactly the same, but the only thing that they did different was every time to include the answer. So that they just nearly looked at a way to make sure that they are multiplying it correctly. So it was 1 times 24 is 24, 2 times 12 is 24, 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 6 is 24. So that is, you'll see that covers that component. And then they go back again. So 6 times 4, 8 times 3, 12 times 2, 24 times 1. So you can, in a sense, every time have, let's, just so that you, and that's why this one was a bit different. 
Um, so what I would have nearly done is to say, OK, there's my two pairs. There's my two pairs. There's my two. And there's the two. So you nearly match up the numbers each time. So one times 24 would have given you the 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six, every time you've got the 24. So that is a way to work out the factors. Um, there's no real shortcut on any of our calculators to work it out. So unfortunately, this is one that you will need to sit with a piece of paper or with something and write down the factors. They do ask questions around factors in your, and you would have, I think they might have been in your assignment already. Um, so they would just, and they might say something like, what factors was in 24 and in 36? So that you nearly need to see, well, in both of them was one, in both of them was two, in both of them was three, in both of them was four, in both of them was six. Okay, so nine wasn't in both, eight wasn't in both, 12 was in both, and for others not. So it might be that they ask you something like which are okay so it was already asked in a in assignment one okay that and and that is also now interesting so this was never part of of a work for for assignment one nearly was assignment one covering which chapters one and two or one two and three so they Hello, will read sir. yes chapter one was covering um uh, sorry assignment one was covering chapter one and two but i think mostly it was chapter one okay so so it seems like what they might do is in most of the assignments they focus most of the work on what was in the chapters, but it might be that they ask one or two questions that's maybe not related. Yeah, I see. So, so that is, so they basically ask chapter one, two, and three in assignment one, which again, is not that nice if you think of how they defined what was supposed to be in each assignment. Mm. Okay, so hopefully then assignment two, which was also due, did that also cover fractions and ratios um, and factors, or was there now other things asked in assignment two? Because I think assignment two was also already due for you guys. It would just be interesting because then there's not 100% alignment between your study units and the, and the assignment, which is not that great. OK, so, so that was looking at, at factors. Then the other thing that we then start looking at is to take um, the, the factors a bit further to then say, but what is your, your and we can call it long, lowest common multiple. Um, I like to call it your lo lowest common factors nearly. Um, but again, so that was nearly what we, what we did a bit in the previous one, but combining everything. So, so we can look at lowest common multiple and let's, 
I'm going to put this on a on a blank one so that we can just work through it. Because I want to show you something else and I didn't want that part included, but that's now fine. We'll we'll manage. OK, so, so let's just for now look at that. I want that one. OK, so we've got your least common multiple. We've got 12, we've got 15 and 20, and we need to work out what is your least common multiple. OK, but first what we could have done with 12 is to look at at the factors as well. So I just want to, to show you something. So we're not going to do that for all of them. So I want to show you something out of this. So you can see that what they did with least common multiple is to say, if you look at how many numbers you're going to multiply to get to 12, there's the four and there's the three. So if we have chosen six and two, that one we can also change. If we use three and four, that one we also need to get the smaller multiple. Um, so that is exactly the same, exactly the same. And one and 12, we will just we need to break 12 into more pieces. Um, so if the way to get to six is to multiple two by three, and if we said, OK, we want to use four, the way to get to four was two and two. So then in any case, we would have had with the two and the six, two times two times three, and for three and for four, two times two times three. So it, it, I just want to show you guys, it doesn't matter how you break that 12 down as long as you every time you just take one of the numbers so that it goes to the smallest numbers possible then you will get exactly the same number set so it doesn't matter if here you say two or six and two because then you will still be able to break that up into the next set. Um, so as long as you just go always to the smallest numbers that is possible. Um, so if we set 1 and 12, again, there would have been a 6 and a 2. And then that 6 would have, again, broken into six, uh, 3 and 2. So again, we would have had 2, 2 and 3. So just so that you guys must not be nearly afraid if you suddenly in, if you Google something and you see you did something somewhere in the middle part, now suddenly you're wrong, you're not. As long as you get to that two, two and three in the end for 12, you are correct. It doesn't matter which method you used, um, you will still get to the, to the same answer. So when we look at 15, I did the same. I was like one and 15, and then it becomes a bit more tricky because two can't, so it's three and five, and then it is basically just back five, three, 15, 1. So here we don't really have anything else than, 
than three and five. Okay, so to have three and five and five and three exactly the same. Okay, so in the first one we had two, two and three. Here we had three and five. And then we look at the 20. So again, one and 20, two and 10, three won't at work. Four can work, so four and five. Okay, then we back to five, four, 10 to 20 and one. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, the four and the five looks like maybe the smallest. So, but, oh, oh yes, four can be two times two. Okay, so with this one, we then have that it is two times two times five. So if we use two and 10, again, we should have seen, okay, but two goes into 10 and five times, so that would have been two times five in any case, so then it would have been two, two and five. So again, it doesn't matter which ones or how you break it up just so that you in the end still get to the smallest numbers. Now what we need to do with a least common multiple is to say, okay, we're looking at all these numbers and I now need to work out what will be the least numbers that I need to put together that it will give me the solution of a 12, 15 and the 20. Okay, so not if I multiply that out, but if I look at all three of those numbers of 12, 15 and 20, and I break it up in smaller factors, what are the least number of factors that I need to have into my final answer? So what I always do is I look at the first one and I know, okay, so all of those in the first one needs to be in the least or the lowest common multiple. Then I say, well, I've got two, two and three. What is in the three and five that is not there yet? It's the five. So I only add the extra one that is not yet in those first three. So three is already there, so I don't add three, but five is not, so I, I need to add three. So that comes out of the 15. And then I look at my last one and say, is there anything in, in this last one that I need to, to look at that needs to be added here. So I look at, okay, there's two twos, but there's already two twos. There's a five, but there's already a five. So by looking at the number 20, there's nothing more that I need to add to the lowest or the least common multiple. So that will be then my final answer for the least common multiple. Okay, we are going to go through a few examples as well. So I will definitely show you a few examples, but that's nearly how we will get to it. So we don't put in an extra free um, unless we had to, because it was maybe 45, and for 45, it was times three, but it was maybe two threes that we we needed to have. But if it isn't like that, we don't we don't add if we don't need extra extra information. So the least um, number of of factors or numbers that we need to need to have. Okay, I'll we will do a few extra on that. Then. 
fractions which I see you also had in in your first assignment, which again is not not really great, but I already ask it. But in fractions as well, and that's why I I took this from from um, the internet. Is nearly this. There's three types of fractions that that you need to know, and this one sums it up very nicely. So, so you need to know about a proper fraction. So that is when the fraction, as I call it, looks nice. So a one over two, a three over five, a six over ten. So something that that you can really work with. Um, so even if it is 591 over 2600, it's still a proper fraction. Then we get an, what they call an improper fraction. So the way to spot the improper fraction is that the number on top will always be bigger than the number at the bottom. So that is when it is an improper fraction. So your numerator, the one on top, is always bigger than the one at the bottom, your denominator. So improper basically look at where your top number is always bigger than your bottom number. The reason why I'm, I'm looking at this is because what they can ask you in the exam and it might have been how they phrased it in in assignment one as well is they can give you a question like which one is a proper function and give you four options and you need to to pick which one is proper or they can ask you which one is the improper fra fra fraction not function fraction and you need to pick which one is improper. So they can then also add something that's a mixed fraction. And all that is a mixed fraction is when an improper fraction is made into a number plus another part of a fraction. So that is what a mixed fraction is. So a mixed fraction can always be put back into an improper fraction. So it might even be that you get a question that they say, change the, this fraction into an improper fraction. So you get nearly a mixed fraction and you need to change it into an improper fraction. So that might be also a way that that they ask it. Um, they don't really go into definition, but if there is something with fractions and definitions, they might tell you um, and they might give you something like two over five, and they might have option one is two, and they say which one is correct. And they might have number two is the denominator. So you know it's incorrect. They can say, well, five is the numerator, which is also incorrect. They might say the fraction two over five is improper, which is also incorrect. And then the fourth option might be that the fraction two over five is a proper fraction, and then that is the correct one. So they can nearly put three or four of these concepts into one question and ask you which one is the correct one, or they could have said, list a few things um, and it could be that all of them are, are correct except one. So it might be that you need to pick the incorrect one. So, so that is a way that, that they can phrase the, the question as well. 
Okay, so let's look at a few few fractions. And here it was basically to and we'll we'll do one of each at the top, I'll show you. And when I share it, you can you can use some of the others to 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 test and see if you can do it and then um please we can on the on the whatsapp we can discuss some of the answers as well so if you go through it if you are not 100 percent sure we got to something um please that's why we have a whatsapp group is to ask questions around um, these kind of things where we prep you for for what is needed so Let's look at the first one. Five over two plus one over two is six. Ah, oh, not two. Sorry, twelve. My brain is already on an holiday, public holiday mode. Um, so five over twelve plus one over twelve, six over twelve. And what they want you then to do is to simplify to the smallest answer. So six over twelve is one over two. Very important for you guys again is to check when you need to nearly get to these answers. First check what your um, what the answer set might be. Um, so because how how we normally look at it and what they normally want you to, to do is to have your answer in the, the simplest form. Um, but it might be that they actually have 6 over 12 as one of your answers. Um, they will not have both in your answer set as a possible answer because both are right. But they might want you to get to the simplest form. Um, which then is one over two. So just check in your answer set sometimes um, at what level do they stop? Okay, so then we'll quickly look at this one at B, three over seven plus four over seven. So that is seven over seven which is actually one over one, which would I should have said actually, which is just one. OK, so again, they might have had this as the final answer, the one over one as the final answer, even one. All three of them are correct. All three of them can't be in your final answer set unless they have an option to say, all of the above is correct. And I don't know if they still still do that. So um, in this instances, I would go for the one that is is the simplest form nearly. And and that would then be the one. OK, so another example is where we need to subtract. So 13 over 4 minus 6 over 4, so it is 13 minus the 6, so 7 over 4. Okay, so that, if they said to us, keep it in an improper fraction, that would have been it. That's an improper fraction. If they said to us, your answer should be as a mixed fraction, then it is, okay, let's see, mixed fraction, OK, so 4 goes into 7, so it was 1 time, then 3 over 4 is left. OK, so again, depending on what they tell you to do, your answer might be a bit different. OK, so let's look at, at this one as well. Bit weird, so two is on its own, then we have four over five. OK, 
Okay, so now that would have been my final answer, unless they ask you write it in the proper or improper, sorry, improper form. So then it is five times two is 10, 10 plus four is 14. So if it was an improper fraction, it would have been 14 over five. So again, all depending on what they want you to write as the final answer, it could have been the mixed fraction, it could have been the improper fraction. Okay, you can't really have a mixed fraction and a proper fraction. So this one is nearly always on its own. And then these two you can nearly use interchangeably. So depending on what they want as the final answer. Okay, so that is some of the simplification of, of fractions. And please, you can, when you do the others and you, you struggle somewhere, please, on the WhatsApp group, just say 2 over 9 plus 4 over 9, I'm struggling or something like that. Okay, then another piece that was probably unfairly in your assignment one as well is ratios um and and for nearly the problem with ratio is we first need to look at fractions um because it's easier to look at ratios after you've done nearly fractions and decimals because then it becomes easier to look at at ratios as well. Um, so converting fractions, and, and this is a strange one because you can use your calculator. So, so nothing limits you to need to work out what two over five is on in your head or on a piece of paper or anything. You can just actually use your calculator and say two divided by five and get the answer. Okay, so this is again, you guys are writing my writing your assignment is multiple choice, your exam is multiple choice. So they can't ask you to show how you got to the 0 0.4. You must just select it out of out of the answer set. Um, what I did here or what I copied here for you guys is to see how it normally works. So if we didn't know what 2 over 5 is, how we would make it to something that we can work with is to change that bottom one. Instead of 5, you always want to change it to a 10 or 100 or 1000. So but to change that to a 10, you multiply at the bottom by 2, and then you need to multiply at the top by 2. And then 4 over 10 is 0, 0,4. And if we then needed to put that into a percentage, it would have been 0 0.4 times 100, which would have given us an, sorry, 40%. Okay, so I just quickly added the, the percentage if you also need to need to work with uh, with a percentage. Um, but again, what you now can do with your calculator if they ask you to say put two over five as a percentage, you just go to two over five or to your calculator, say 2 divided by 5, and then you multiply that answer by 100. Please don't go on your calculator and say 2 divided by 5, then you get 0 0.4, and then press the percentage key because what it will mostly do then 
is take 0 0.4 and still divide it by 100. OK, so just be careful which calculators you use that you don't go and say if you need to change it to a percentage that you say 2 divided by 5, you get 0 0.4 and then you press the the percentage key because it most likely will then still divide it by 100. So I would rather if you need to change it to a percentage, I would rather then say 2 over 4 times 100 percent is equal to 0 0,4 times 100 percent, which is then 40 percent. So just be careful sometimes with, I know my HP calculator automatically divides it by 100. It might be that some of the, the other cleverer calculators might have it built in that it changes the 0 0.4 as if it was uh, a percentage, but I'm worried that some of it might. So rather when you need to change it, multiply it by 100% than just pressing the, the percentage button. Epeling, is there a question that you want to, to ask? Yes, yes. Cool. Uh, I wanted to ask you, so which calculator should we use so that we don't get confused? <laughs> it's okay so and, and this is just um i'm i'm again normally i would use excel so so it's probably not the answer that you that you're also looking for because i would have said okay in excel 0 0.5 or there was the two divided by five i would press the percentage and then it formats it into what you need to get to. I don't know yet if you guys are allowed to use Excel with the exam. I'm sure you are allowed to use Excel um, in your assignments because again, your assignments, it's not timed. It's um, you, you have ample of time to work through it. You're allowed to um, to use Excel calculators, all those kind of things. So again, for me, Excel is the nicest. And, and what I normally would have done with Excel is to say, let's, let's look at, at at where was the original. So let's look at it as two over five. So this is what I would have done nearly if I was doing it for myself and I can share Excel spreadsheet with you guys as well. So so what I would have done is to say, and let's, I want to make this smaller so that, so I would have said, okay, let's, Let's put in the, the, the numerator and let's just spell it right. Let's call it the denominator. Not <laughs> demo, dino, denominator. Sorry for that spelling error. Um, and then what I would do is and we'll take that away. Then I would say, okay, but what is it as a, as a decimal? And what is it as a percentage? And then we can, I will program it for you guys so that for a decimal, it is just that divided by that. So you get the decimal of 0 0.4. And if it was percentage, it is basically um, as percentage formatted for you as well. So if you now suddenly sit with a number 120 divided by 600, then you can look at the decimal. 
it will be 0 0.2 and your percentage would be 20 percent and we can make that so that sometimes you want to have more than one decimal so i will share this with you because um i don't have an issue with with you guys looking at excel and those kind of things because again i if where i work in financial services i don't use my financial calculator at all i use excel so sometimes and again if you have a laptop and you have windows excel is for free so that's why if i don't really want to say which calculator because again um calculators to go to the expense now also to buy new calculators is sometimes not not even necessary um so let me see if i can get um i look at one of the the, the 101 letters that you got from unisa and i think 102 i'll look at that and see if i can maybe get the lecturer's email address or something and and i will ask them about if you are allowed to use excel because again then this is already set up for you guys so when when you need to answer something you have it okay so because we can even then build something like this into it as well which again is more useful than now trying to always work on different calculators and know exactly which formula to use when and brackets so i will find out for you guys what what you are allowed to to use and and not because again i love excel and you're going to use excel much more than than a calculator okay so that is nearly, if I think that is the theory part. So now we're going to go into lots of questions. So um, the first one and what what I will do is I will show you nearly one or two of them and leave a third one that that you can can go and and practice as well. So with this one now we just look and let me just get so here they only asking us to factorize so not the lowest common multiple only to factorize so also be very careful in your when you guys do this because you might get an answer set where you need only to give factors and they might include more than just factors so so just just be careful about um and looking specifically at what they're asking so factors um basically we look at 21 we break it up so how to get to 21 1 times 21 two times will not work three times yes three times seven four no five no six no okay so then we basically get the turnaround seven and three and then it's back to 21 so okay that's weird so let me quickly <laughs> don't worry about that um let me just quickly stop and share again is it now showing the 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 right screen again cool 
Okay. So what you will also notice, and I don't think I said it the previous when we also looked at factorizing, when you go from three to seven, you can see we basically just turn the numbers around. So then you can automatically write the one that was before that. Because if there wasn't a four times something or a five times something or a six times something to get 21, there will also not be an eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever. Okay, so so again, you can nearly see that as there was two above and there's two below for this one. So that is where you can stop. So your factors would have been one, three, seven, and 21. Okay, so that is um, one way to do it. So let's look at 48, which might now, it will have more. But also I want to nearly show you guys where there's again that one point where you will see it basically just swap around that. So, so let's look at, so one is fine, two, 24. Okay, I'm going to calculate this. So I'm gonna say 48 divided by three. Again, this is not, you must, don't need to know this, but you need to say, okay, one times 48 is 48, two times 24. It's not like school where they draw that you need to know what's a, a two times table and three times table. Some of these um, just use your calculator to say, okay, 16 divided by three is what? So 48 divided by four is 12. Okay, we know it can't be five because it needs to then have ended with a five or a zero, but it might be six, so 48 divided by six. Okay, so it gives us six and eight. So then 48 divided by seven can't be, 48 divided by eight is six. Okay, so again, so here you see, okay, so that is where a change happens. So now the next one will be 12 and 4, 16 and 3, 24 and 2, 48 and 1. Okay, so that that's nearly a way of identifying also, because again, you can go 48 divided by 9, 48 divided by 10, 48 divided by 11, but you actually don't need to because you have done it there already. Okay, so this was to, to factorize. So that was for factors in this one, this massive, a lot of factors. So it is one, two, so in the exam and in your assignments, they will probably not ask a, a 48 or 72 because when your answer beca becomes very long, um, so they normally ask you one that has four, five or six factors in it because otherwise it really becomes a very long answer if you now need to give you four or five options in the in the exam so they probably normally have that you only have four or five factors that you need to need to work with okay so that was on factors so then the logical next one is lowest or least common multiples um so again i'm gonna show you the first one and you can can do the second one um, as practice again and and ask if there is issues um, so let's let's look at nine so i would have broken it down into factors but there is really not a lot 
so you can see that that is basically what we have for nine it's it's three times three um but we will do the same for 15 the one and 15 three sorry three times five will give you a 15 and then okay so there we have uh, a turnaround and then 15 one so the two factors that we will have is three and five or five and three doesn't matter um it it is those two and then we sit with 50 as one times 50 two times 15 okay that's interesting so it, it comes looking at that three times 10 okay four doesn't work five times six okay so then six times five so there we nearly have a turnaround so then we can go back to say okay 10 times 3 15 times 2 30 times 1. okay so i would look at again yeah the 3 times 10 but then i need to so i will look at the 5 times 6 but then I see, OK, well, I need to change that still. So it is five times and six is three times two. OK, so now to get the common or the lowest common multiple out of all three of these. So there's the one, there's the second one, and there's the third one. Okay, so let's start with two. That's the smallest. Got two there. Don't have two. So we need to have two as one of your your lowest ones. Then three. There's three. There's one three, but we've got two three. So we need to say three times three because in that instance we've got two of them. And then five is there, there's a five, not there, but that means that we need to add five. So your lowest common multiple would have been two times three times three times five. Okay, so again, there's different ways that you guys can work it out for yourself. I like this one because then I'm making sure that at least I remember everyone, everything is included. And then at this point, you can see, well, the five I can't make any smaller, but the six I can. Um, so that six then is broken into the two and, and the three. Okay, so that is when you're looking for the lowest common, common multiple. Then, a few improper fractions so again here they must tell you nearly what you need to do they can't just say simplify um, which they might have done in your assignments but then they can't give you an option that is in the simplest form and in an improper fraction so they can't give you and answer that is in both. OK, so. If we say here, they tell us go from write the improper fraction as a mix, so we need to break this into a mixed fraction, so there needs to be a number, a whole number plus a fraction left. So. Yes. There's a question, Vincent, you can you can ask. Or is it Victoria? I can't see. OK, so can you hear yeah. me? Yes, I can. OK, uh, I want to go back to the to the LCM, the least common multiples. Yes. Uh, the question that I'm asking the. Uh, 
the the least common multiples for nine and fifteen and thirty. I don't get it when you say it's uh, five, three, and two. Is it supposed to be, or is it not supposed to be like a a one a one number, maybe three, for all okay. of these nine, fifteen, and thirty. So, so what? So and and Vincent, you you're right there. So what they sometimes do. So again, um, it is in how they ask the question. So it will end up to be one number because you will say two times three times three times the five, which will give you. And thanks for that. So it will give you. So your answer would have been sixty. Yeah. Actually, as your your lowest or least common multiple, but how you get to it is with two times three times three times five. You spot on. Thank you. Thank you for that. So what they can ask you is this question twofold. So they can ask you what is the factors that, that makes up the least common multiple, or they can ask you what is the least common multiple as a number? OK, so you spot on. So it will be a final answer most likely that they give you instead of the factors. But I have seen questions where we also ask you to, uh, to look at the factors. So just be aware of both, but thank you for that. OK. OK, so how did you get to 90 so that I can just. Oh, wait, thank you. <laughs> so again, please don't do what I did. I did it in my head and not with a calculator. Three times three is nine and not six. Um, so please don't. I now did it in my head. So I say two, I say three times three is six um, and not nine. So I said that six times that is 50 times that is 60. So sure, please don't do it in your head um, unless you got it right and not like me that may. You can see definitely my head is already on in a long weekend mode. So please, when you do it, um, Use for calculator. Don't in this instance now make a silly mistake like I did. Um, and again, what they will probably give you as options would have probably been 60, would have been 90. It would have been if you add those three together, so that would have been 9 plus 15. So they might have given you the 54 also as a as an option. So again, please don't make this stupid mistake. I did now to try and multiple multiply it in your head. So thanks for that. That was very easily getting to the to the 90 and not the 60. Okay. OK, cool. So again, yes. Yeah, so Vincent, to your point, they might do that or they might say which factors um, are there to determine that LCM. But most likely it is only a number. From improper to to mix, so yeah. Again, what I would do since I now made that that mistake with uh, of saying three times three is, is six, I would go and say on my calculator seven divided by five. Um, so that I get one comma something. So then I know 
Okay, seven minus with five. So what I will be left is with two over five. Again, my HP. So if a link, if if you want to apply a calculator that can do the nice fractions and those kind of things, don't buy HP because you can't now where I think the sharp you can actually put in seven over five and it will give you the 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 mixed fraction. So you guys can also just let me know if any of you have um, a calculator that can actually convert to seven over five in a mixed fraction. I'm I'm sure one of the shops or one of the cashiers actually do it. Yes, the recording will be shared after after the session, so don't worry about that. Again, recording will be shared on the Western Cape portal, but I will also share it on our WhatsApp group later tonight with all the previous sessions that we had as well. Okay, so if any of you, okay, so how I got this the two over five so i said okay seven divided by five gave me the one but then i said okay what is seven minus five and that was two so what is left at the top is the the two so it is two over five that is left okay so if i again had and let's do it now the other way around. If I had the two, one and two over five, and I need to get it into an improper function, I would have said one times, or sorry, five times one, which gives me five. Five plus the two will give me the seven over five. So that is how I would have said to the other way around if you again need to need to move it from a mixed fraction back to the improper because that they can ask you as well. Okay, does that make make sense, Anita? And you can just give give a thumbs up if that Okay, so Let's look at one that's a, a bit different now. So where it's not just one. So 22 divided by 6. Again, I'm going to go calculator root. So if I work it out with a calculator, this gives me 3 times 6, 6, six, seven, and depending on where you rounded it off. Okay, so we know at least that we're working with three. So the same question nearly, how do I get again to whatever the rest of the fraction is? So I would have said, okay, I've got, I know I've got three whole numbers. So if I have three whole numbers, the three times the six will give me 18. So that three whole numbers, if I had to put it into just a fraction, it would have been 18 over six. Okay, so what is left of a 22 if I take away 18? So what is left if I take away the 18? It is 4. So what is left is 4 over 6. Okay, so that is, again, and and that is what I also want to, to nearly find out from, from your study guides and your your letters um, so again just the link to the whatsapp group i will also um, if you can't access the link 
you can use my cell phone number um, because again some of the what is it the 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 things that track you while you're writing exams is checking if you're working if you're looking at your cell phone so it's it's a difficult one because probably they will tell you in the exam you're not to use to use you're not allowed to use your cell phone because they worried that you message on it um so that is that's why i rather would want to use something like excel where at least it's not you look not looking at at yourself and because sometimes they see it they don't know what's on your phone so sometimes that be, really becomes the issue and again i it i understand why you want to use the cell phone um yes you have to put on your camera so that is um so i've so you know, most of you haven't written the online exams at UNISA yet. So you need to put on your camera. Um, there is some kind of, of what they call individualated tool or something like that that will nearly look at. Yes. OK, so please send me that tat letter 101. Um, so please send that tat letter to me that I can just check in there because the sharp calculator that they refer to in your tat letter is the one that can also, if you put this in, you can change it automatically. The difference between the how we did it for the first one and the third one is with the first one. I knew that that my answer is one and something. So then it was easy to say seven minus five. So here it, we could have done the same, but when it is 22 minus six is 16. So then 16 divided by six is still not in the smaller. So then we need to um subtract again six which gives us 10 then we need to subtract again six which will give us four over six so you but then you need to continuously do it so they we have the four over six and then we could have said okay well to move from there to there was one to move from there to there is two to move from there to there is three so we have three and four over six. You could have done that as well. As long as you continue with it until the top one is smaller than the bottom one. OK, so and, and that's why I wanted to show you the third one, because again, the second one will probably stop after one move. So. Um, I specifically wanted to to nearly focus on one that we know it's not going to be one and and a fraction. It is actually more than one. So you could have gone that process, but just remember that after you add one and now you have 16 over six, you still need to go smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to um where the, the top one is smaller than than the bottom one and again now they can could have said four over six you might need to to again make smaller so that it is three and two over three so again when you guys look at it Yes, I love that Sonani. So another way to look at it is 
you basically look at how many times 6 goes into 22, and that is your whole number, and the rest, like we did here, and, you, and the rest will be what is on top, that is your numerator. Cool. Okay, so let's look now at um, simplification of, of some expressions. Uh, I just want to see what else do we have. So we have a few of them. Yeah, and then we have decimals. So let's just do one of each, and then I want to show a, a ratio as well. So simplification, and, and how I look at simplification is so you can if it's multiplication you can do this a few ways so you could have said okay seven times 15 gives a number divided by nine times 14 it gives a number and then when you can simplify more but what i normally like to do is to say okay let's see we've got at the bottom nine at the top 7 15 so it doesn't really look nice um at the top 7 and 15 9 and 14 so i know that 7 goes into 14 so 7 goes into 7 once 7 goes into 14 twice okay so because it's multiplication i can um eliminate what i do at the top and the bottom at the same time then I see, OK, well, 9 and 15, I can't, but there's something within 9, I can. So if I now use um, the fractions that we did, 3 goes into 9 three times, 3 goes into 15 five times. So now, the easier way then to say it's 1 times 5 is 5, 3 times 2 is six and that will be nearly the simplest form okay so a bit differently you could have said and let's let's quickly show it seven times 15 is 105 nine times 14 is 126 okay so then what we probably would have said is, OK, let's divide at the top by five, uh, by three. So we get 105 divided by three is 35. 126 divided by three is 42. Then I again need to simplify more. So seven goes into 35, six, no. Then it's 42 actually. So it's six at the bottom and at the top it's five. Okay, so you could have done that way as well. You will get the same answer. Okay, so when it's multiplication, you can nearly cancel the factors out. It's fine. Or you can multiple at the top, multiple at the bottom, and then start simplifying it. Okay, hey, when we look at division, there's a trick, another trick that comes in with division. So we can't now say seven divided by five and eight divided by four. So so we can't do that. Um, but there's a rule with this is when we have a division, we can swap it around. Okay, so the rule is with whatever div we divide, we can change it that we multiply, but we multiply with nearly the opposite. So instead of 5 over 4, we multiply by 4 over 5. Now again, you can go the route to say, 7 times 4 is something, 8 times 5 is something. I love to first simplify it. So 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 
twice. So at the top, we've got seven times one. At the bottom, we've got two times five. Okay. Number two, you can do on your own. Um, and we can, again, chat on it on, on the WhatsApp group. But let's, and maybe we can come back if we've done some of the others as well. Okay, so multiplication in a sense is easier because you can, you're allowed to, to cancel out factors from above and below. Adding is not as simple. So we can't with adding say, that is two plus six, uh, two, four plus two, is six and seven plus three is 10. Okay, so we can't do that. So the only time that we can add two fractions is if the denominator is the same. The same, the only time that we can subtract two fractions is when, where is it? where that denominator, or well, one at the bottom, is the same. So I now need to decide with this one, what will be, again, yes. So if you use Casio, so that is again, so check between the Casio and the Shaw because you, you're allowed to use any calculator for your exam. So they're not going to ask you, um, start the exam, hold up your calculator that they can see what calculator you're using. You can use any, any calculator. So most of the cashiers and sharp calculators, you can actually put the fractions in as 4 over 7 plus 2 over 3, and it will give you the, that Casio, it is the best. Um, it, it really is the best. If, if I needed to buy any calculator again, I would not have gone HP. Um, I would have gone with that that Casio because it's not just for this subject. Whenever you do any other of the decision sciences like DSC or anything like that, that Casio FX, that all <laughs> number one, it really is a brilliant calculator that can do a lot of other things as well that you're not going to do in this in this course, but it might assist you with a lot of other courses, specifically in the decision sciences. So if you are going to go the route of, and I don't know how all the subjects always fit in, but if in your, later on you do any of the DSC decision sciences, the DSC 15, 20, 16, 30, or even second year with Casio FX1 is really a brilliant calculator. Okay, so if we don't have that calculator, we now need to get that our denominators are the same. The easiest way to get that it's the same is to say, well, if I multiply the two together, I know that my, my common denominator will be 21. So then I can say, well, 7 goes into 21, 3 times, 3 times 4 is 12, 3 goes into 21 in 7 times, 7 times 2 is 14. So if you again look at the 12, Divided by, and let's just get another color in, the 14 over. So if we simplified that, 3 would go into 12 in 4 times. 3 would go into 21 
seven. Okay, so that is where we started off. If we simplified the 14 over 21, seven goes into 14 in twice, seven goes into 21 three times. So we are back to where we were. So we are correct in what we've done so far. So 12 plus 14 is 26. So 26 over 21. So now again, depending on your answer set, this could be your final answer if I want it as a mixed number or a mixed fraction. If you need to put it, uh, sorry, improper, I, I will now re repeat how we got to the, the 12 plus 14. Um, and then if we now need to again put it into uh, one where it is a whole number plus a fraction, again, you could have now said 21 goes into 26 in how many times? Once. Then 26 minus 21 is what is left. So 5 over 21 will be left. So let's quickly just redo how we got to the 12 and the 14. So I've got 4 over 7 and I've got 2 over 3. So I said at least the smallest that I know of is if I multiply the 7 and the 3, that will be my smallest. Um, or lowest denominator uh, that that I will work with. Um, so seven goes into twenty one three times. Three times four is twelve. Two, oh sorry, three goes into twenty one seven times. Seven times two is fourteen. So 12 plus 14 is your 26 over 21. Okay. Does that make sense, Zanani? Cool. Okay, so the second one is a bit tricky. So look at the second one and, and try to work it out over the the long weekend um decimals i would just say go calculator say two divided by two divided by five and you get your 0 0.4 when it is something like two and one over six i will rewrite it as two we know what the two is so i would not even put it in in the calculator i know again the casio you can put in a whole number and the, the the fraction but else i would just rewrite the two and then i would say okay but what is one divided by six and that then i would write down to four decimals or whatever they need to again tell you how many decimals? They can't, again, just assume that you know how many decimals, um, unless in the answer there are answers that has three or four decimals, when you know at least what to work towards. Okay, so I would have done it again on my calculator. I would have isolated the two, rewritten that over, and then I would have just said, what is one divided by six? Okay. Then how to rewrite a, a number or a decimal into a fraction? So here it is nearly how I look at it is if I have one number right of a decimal, I will multiply by 10. Okay, so then my answer would have been 4 over 
10. If I have again here one decimal, one and six over 10. If I have, let's do that. So that you can just see, if I have two decimals to the right, I would multiply by 100. So then it becomes four. Let me please just rewrite that so that we can just. That was very unneat. OK, so we have a two. So 0, 0,04 times 100. So we if we do the fraction. It will be four over 100. The same in this instance, if we do it multiplied by 100, so that is 6 over 100. It might then happen that you need to maybe simplify. 4 goes into 4, maybe once 4 goes into 100, what, 25? But I will not at this stage now try to say, oh, do I multiply? Or at this stage, do I multiply now by 20 or 25? Or I would just go straight and multiply by 100. And then it's easier to work from 4 over 100 to simplify. The same, again, if I've got three decimals to the right, it goes to 1,000. So then it will be 6 over a thousand and we can continue like that so depending on how many decimals that is how many zeros i would nearly have as as my fraction so if it is four decimals four zero five decimals five zeros okay so that is again and i don't know if some of the calculators allow you to work back from it might so again please the guys that have cashiers if that actually works back from if you put in 0 0.4 if you can get that into a fraction that will be nice to to share that also with the, the group because then it is definitely a calculator that they might need to need to invest in okay then the last section nearly is ratios um, and again if i remember from the chat you guys even said that some of this was even in your um, first assignment which is again not not nearly great um, so let me just let I'll work, I'll show both of these ratios, and then I will look at others that I can also share with you that you have a bit, bit more of them. Um, so here they tell us in the first one, there are 15 green apples and 25 red apples in a bowl. Determine the ratio green apples against red apples. So here, very simple. We know there's 15 green apples. We know there's 25 red apples. OK, assignment two. OK, thanks. Thanks, Elias. Um, and, and I think probably with assignment one and two being so close to one another, um, it, it was it was probably a, a sketchy. Um, so but. Basically, here they tell us there's 15 of the one and there's 25 of the other. What they can also have asked you to do is to say, determine the ratio of red apples to green apples. And so then that ratio changes. Then that ratio is actually. 25 to 15. Okay, so 
just be very careful, especially with the ratio ones, that you you read it a few times. Um, again, it's it's what I like normally to uh, do when it was also still paper based, and it's very difficult now. So I would have actually done this in when it was paper based, and I, I don't know how one does it when we're online because I would have done that. Um, and then it is easier to say, well, OK, it's green to red. So red is on that side. Green is on that side. So then I know it's 15 and the red is 25. So that's why I normally and obviously we won't see that now. So let's undo. Um, so. And now that is the next question. So. Normally you would need to simplify. So normally you would need to simplify. So five then goes into. 15 three times five goes into there. So again, it would be interesting in your. Assignment. To if I ask ratio if the answer set was also simplified but normally they want it simplified but again if they had these as options they can't have both but normally simplified if it was the other way around that we needed to say um and let me take this away now. So if it was red versus green, it is not a problem that your ratio on the one side now is bigger than the other side. So 25 bigger than 15 for a ratio, no problem at all. So this ratio, if you simplified it, would have been five and three. OK, no problem to have a ratio that is bigger on the left hand side versus the right hand side. It can happen. OK, and especially then if you look at the next question where it's a ratio of three, it is much more likely that somewhere to the left of a number, there will be a bigger number. OK, but. The first one, purely they give you the two numbers. They could have added here. And then he said blue apples. So what other color is? <laughs> so let's say yellow apple. So they could have said there is. 10 yellow apples. And then determine the ratio of yellow green to red. Um, so then it would have been yellow, green, red. And again, we might be able to simplify it. So yes, five goes into the two, three and five. So they, they can also have three or four in the ratio. It doesn't always only need to be two. Um, and that is why there's, there's just a slight difference between ratios and fractions, because fractions, you would see yeah, it's exactly, it's 15 over 25, so 3 over 5. But you can't do 2 over 3 over, you can't get a fraction for more than two numbers, where ratios you can build in another variable or another thing to it. OK, then the last one of of the ratios. And again, this is they love to ask. Question two, um, I've seen question two now in. In different ways that they ask it, so here they ask it between three people. But you need to break something up. 
sometimes they do the one that that they break up something that you mix so that it's portion water portion maybe oil and a portion something else so it is sometimes they want to break up paint and then if you want to mix it it is a portion water portion water uh, oil and a portion something else um so so it does not always need to be people that that they break up in something like option two it might be that it is and a weird one too but it might be and an easy one to nearly if you mix a cocktail um, and sometimes they will say one pot vodka to two pots orange juice to three pots ice or something like that that's a ratio um so uh, so that is nearly so when you make bake a cake even and there's 15 millimeters of this or one teaspoon two teaspoons three teaspoons of something that's a ratio so they can can put ratios and they love to do the one where it is there's two or three people and you need to divide it according to a ratio or it is something where you need to mix something up and you make, need to mix it according to a ratio because what they then will say is you need to make 50 liters of paint and the ratio for that is to two water two water one oil and three something else and then you need to to work out nearly how many of each do you need for that 50 liters the same with this one is they tell us these three people have a flock of sheep they've got 57000 so the three sons have 57000 sheep between them but it might be because of age it is divided differently so the ratio how it is divided is 3 to 11 to 5. okay so 3 to 11 to 5. so first we nearly want to find out okay so how many pieces are there to this puzzle so if we get to the 57,000 in how many pieces do we need to need to break it up so it is as easy to say 3 plus 11 plus 5 so we will need to break it up into 19 pieces okay and now this is where we get a bit of a fractions again so tabu is the first one he will get it as 3 divided by 19 times 57,000 will be his portion. Lucas will get it as 11 over 19 times 57, and that will be his portion. And the last one is Sipo. Sipo will get it as 5 over 19 times 57,000 and that is his portion and what is interesting if you now and this is again a way to test it if you now multiply that out so 3 divided by 19 times 57,000 so that first one is 9,000 that was for Tabo. We are actually looking for Lucas. So that's the middle one. So 11 divided by 19 times 57,000 is 53. And the last one, which is SIPO, is 5 divided by 19 times 57 is 15,000. So if you now add this again, you must get to 50, 57,000. OK, 
Okay, because you divided it into a free 11 and 5, which is 19. So you divided it into those three fractions. So if you add that together, you must get 57 again. If I ask you to write that down in a ratio, it would have been, and just check this, it would have been 9, 33, 15. Simplest form, need to divide by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 33 divided by 3 is 11. 5 divided by 3 is 5. And look at that, exactly the same. Okay, so you can actually test in the end if you are actually getting again the same answer. Here they only wanted us to work out how many sheep Lucas had, but there is a, a way that you can nearly test if you worked it out correctly, because that, again, that ratio should end up to be the same ratio. Okay. Okay, I'm just adding quickly evaluation form of this session in that you can evaluate the session, then I'm just, the more important one is for anyone that's still not on the WhatsApp group and wants to join, you can join on the link or you can send me a WhatsApp on 0837908387. And then the last one before I stop the recording is just, the attendance register. Um, if you if you can complete that, um, so I'm going to stop the recording and then we can quickly just also. So next we 